Welcome to the Make It Happen with Will Polston podcast. These podcast episodes with Will and his guests provide you with insights on how you can transform your excuses into results to benefit yourself, your family, your friends, your community, society, humanity, and the universe with what Will calls the ripple effect. Will's mission is to empower one billion people via the ripple effect and intends that you'll become another person to add to the count having listened to this episode. Hello and welcome to Make It Happen with Will Polston. I'm Will Polston. This is episode number 49. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about how to make tough decisions. We all need to make decisions in our lives. And yet so often we get concerned and ask ourselves the debilitating question, but what if? Now, I personally, I'm a huge fan of asking the question when people say to me, but what if, is that's a, a what if down. So more often than not, when people go, but what if it doesn't work? It's a what if down. But what if up is, well, what if it does work? What if it does go to plan? But let's just start with going into a little bit more detail. And I want to give you a, a real pragmatic way of being able to identify and make these tough decisions ultimately. Now, the, the Latin word decision literally means to cut off. So making a decision is about cutting off choices, cutting you off from some other course of action that you could possibly take. And what's also really key to understand is that a decision that gets made is only a decision when action is taken. Now, if I was to share with you the old story of uh, six frogs are sat on a log and two decide to jump off, how many are left on the log? Most people would say four, but the answer is six because they've only made the decision. They haven't actually jumped off until they've done the action. So it's really key to understand that a decision is not made until you've taken some form of action towards doing what it is you want to do. So that's the first little nugget of this podcast is that when you do when you do make a decision, make sure that you put something into action instantly. Whatever that is, send that email, make that phone call, make some form of commitment. Now, the biggest threat to making decisions is the harmful emotions, the fear of what if it doesn't work. So in order to um, ensure that you feel emotionally sound about the decision that you've made, there's two things that you need to do. It's a two-phase process. First of all is learning, and then the second is deciding. So is deciding. So learning from other people who may have been there or get opinions from other experts on the subject. Um, or, or most importantly, learn from yourself by aligning and making sure that the decision you're making is congruent with your values, it's congruent with your North Star trajectory. If you're hearing this episode and you've got no idea what I mean when I'm talking about values or North Star trajectory, go back to some earlier episodes in the podcast. I recommend listening to um, Create Your Vision, episode number one, and Identify Your Values in episode number two. Now, um, once you're doing the right learning then and you've done the right learning, it makes the whole decision process so much easier. And I learned a six-step process from Tony Robbins, which I believe is one of the best ways that you can, um, the best simple ways that uh, I've come across in order to making decision. And it's a six-step process that not only helps me make the best possible decision, but it also reduces any downside of a decision that we're looking to make as well. Because we all know that that the decisions that we make have power. They're going to have power over what it's going to enable us to do, what it's going to enable us to feel, what it's going to enable us to have as a result of moving forward. And it's not just about being right. It's how can we be right more often when we're making our decisions. And what I mean being right is being right in terms of what's congruent with us. So the first way that you use this six-step process is really getting clear on your outcomes. So what is the result you're after? Why do you want to achieve that outcome? You must be clear about the outcome that you want. um, And if there's multiple outcomes, put them in order of importance to you. So remember, the reasons come first, and then the answers are going to come second. The second step is to know your options. Now, write down all of the options. Now, this can include some options that may initially sound completely far-fetched. They may seem completely ludicrous, but remember this principle. One option is no option. Two options is a dilemma. Three options is a choice. So when we're creating these crazy options, we're doing it to to stretch our minds and it can potentially enable some hybrid options that could come into this. So this is where your learning phase really gets tested. The better the learning phase, the better options you're going to have to be able to choose from. And you want to write down 
all of your options, whether you like them or not at this stage. Now, I want to say this at this point as well. In my experience, doing this process is so much better to be done, written down. Don't just try and do this in your head because it won't be as effective. The third option is what are the consequences? So you want to look at what are all of the upsides and what are all of the downsides that you're aware of of each option. And also, and then ultimately, what are you going to gain by doing each option? What's it going to cost you? So these are the types of things that we're looking at when we're exploring the, the different upsides and downsides. If you can, I recommend doing this with someone else. Um, so whether it's a coach or a friend that can start to give you different perspectives. The fourth option is start to evaluate your options. So you're going to review each of the upsides, which are the benefits, the downsides, which are the consequences or drawbacks, and ask yourself what options uh, sorry, what outcomes are affected by you um, looking at option one or option two? So you're looking at how 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 are your outcomes going to be affected? Because this is what we started with memory step one, what the outcomes that you wanted. Secondly, how important on a scale of one to 10 is each upside or each downside in terms of meeting your outcomes? Third is then, what is the probability, so zero to 100, that the upside or downside could occur? Because sometimes we can think of things of what's going to happen, which is a possibility, but the probability of it's happening quite is, it can be actually quite small. And sometimes we, we, we have this process in our mind where our mind spirals off and going, yeah, but it could do this, and yeah, it could do that. It's possible it could do that. The probability of it's actually happening is very, very small. So after completing this stage, you're going to be able to start to eliminate some options on your list. You can literally cross them out and go, do you know what? It's too likely that this particular consequence is going to happen and the downside is too big for me, so I want to rule that out. Or you can start to you, you could start to say, well, actually, no, maybe I could play with this and um and and and, and consider that as an option. Then the fifth step in this process is start to mitigate. So you're going to review the downsides of the consequences for each of your remaining options. So the options that you have got left, we're going to go, right, what are the downsides to these consequences? So you're really clear on the worst case scenario. If you're okay with the worst case scenario, then you're going to feel a lot more comfortable having made your decision. And yet then once you've done that, you want to brainstorm any other ways, alternative ways that you can eliminate or reduce these downsides. Put yourself in the best possible position to reduce the downside. So you're putting yourself in a position where effectively all you're you're looking at is the upside or most importantly, the downside that you have identified you're absolutely okay with. And then the final step in this process is to resolve. So based on the most probable consequences, select the option that provides the greatest certainty that you're going to meet the desired outcomes that you set out in step one. Select your best option and then strengthen your resolve to really be able to make it work. Resolve that no matter what happens, this option is going to give you a win. Put yourself in a winning position. And then once you've decided that, then you can start to reverse engineer your plan for implementation to take the action to do the things that you want to do. Now remember this, it's much better to make a decision and monitor to see if you need to shift your approach and to remain paralyzed in indecision. Take the action, constantly check in, am I getting closer or further away from my desired outcome? If you're getting further away, tweak the approach. It's okay to change your mind if you've got the feedback that's telling you that you're not getting closer towards your outcome. This is a really outcome-driven approach. So look, I'd love for you to know, I'd love to know how this process has worked for you. Um, you have the method to stop you procrastinating, making the tough decisions on the things you may have been putting off for so long. I'd love for you to let me know how this process has benefited you. So let me know in the Make It Happen community, our Facebook group, if you're not already in it, of what decisions you've been able to make as a result of doing this and how they've benefited you. I hope you found this useful. Until next time, make it happen. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Make It Happen with Will Polston podcast. Make sure you join Will's free Facebook group, the Make It Happen community. Please support the show by subscribing on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or Google Play. Share this episode with at least one friend you think would benefit from it and give Will a five-star review wherever you download your podcasts. Until next time, Make it happen.